Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studio, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work they love, and create incredible relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend George Campbell, and we are taking your calls on money and life and relationships and work. Whatever you got going on in your life, I am confident we have an opinion on it. Um... Advice and opinions are two very different things. Correct. I will not give you advice, so I'll give you my, I'll give you my opinion. Um, give us a buzz at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Good grief, man. The, the lobby's packed out there. I Good think these are everybody. leftovers from our smart conference event that we just had over the weekend. I don't think they're leftovers. I think they I didn't are, mean it in a bad way. Man. I mean, they don't want to go back to, you know... Coeur d'Alene or wherever they came from. <laughs> They're like, Nashville's where it's at. Let's hang out here. But we did have a great event Friday and Saturday, John, with over 2,000 of our newest friends. Yes, it was fantastic. And it's good to see everybody still hanging out with us. Thank you all so, so much. All right, let's go out to um, Dane in Sacramento. What's up, Dane? Hi, George and John. Can you hear me? We got you, man. What's up? G- great. Hi. Uh, appreciate you, everything you guys do for us. Uh, question is, um, I've been working the baby steps for a number of years, uh, particularly baby step six. I've been paying on my house, trying to pay it off for about seven years. I'm at a point where I have uh, about $29,000 left on my mortgage, and I have uh, basically an emergency fund and some just cash around $35,000. And so I can, you know, smell the finish line. I'm kind of like, well, should I use, you know, pay off my mortgage and have a have a lower emergency fund for a while to build it back up to get out of debt, or should I just uh, kind of keep uh, keep doing what I've been doing? Way to go, dude! Yeah, what does what does lower mean? Well, I mean, I think it's just I, you know, I would thirty five thousand basically my emergency fund, so it'd be down to six thousand right? yeah, dollars. That that frightens me. You're so close. Right. How, oh, dude, how many more I know, months? But I can like, feel it for him. I can you, feel it. How many months is this emergency fund currently of expenses? Oh, it's uh, probably, I mean, it's between three and six. Okay. Probably by like four, I'd say four. How much do you make a month? Uh, it's, it's, uh, I gross uh, like 9500 A month? Yes. So either way, we're talking two months from now, this thing's gone. Three months from now. Uh. How close would you be? Yeah. If you just followed the same pace you were going without touching the emergency fund, how many more months till it's paid off with just extra payments from your paychecks? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking kind of end of the year would be my, you know, uh, long, the, the de- definite, right? Okay. My personal preference is that you keep minimum three months of expenses. Anything beyond that you throw at the house, I'm good with. Okay. And I would, I would probably, if I mean, I mean I, I, I've, I've, I can just feel it, man, for you. And so I, I'm trying to figure out a way to make this, to accelerate this. Maybe you look at three months and you also at the same time, you say, I'm going to leave three months in the account, but I'm going to go bare bones those three months. We're not going to go out. We're not going to do, we're going to go back to baby step one just for, just for 90 days. And we're going to mm-hmm. pay the sucker off right now. If you, if you think you could do that, um, some people pay their house off and they just, kind of have a freebie month and they just kind of go bananas and then others um just walk around in a daze for a few months because they can't believe how good it all feels and so i i'm with i'm i'm i don't know george i'm kind of splitting the difference with you well you're a you're a risk taker john you're like oh let's do it we'll figure I, it out i just later. hate waiting i, I hate waiting but he's waited seven years with such diligence and patience and the last thing i want is for him to do this like hail mary and then the hvac goes out and he doesn't even have enough in the emergency fund to cover it that's the that's the part that I my brain goes to. Funruiner.org.net, man. Here's the other thing though: your expenses will get lower without a house payment by the principal and the interest. You'll still have taxes and insurance, so factor that into the emergency fund, and that will give you kind of a new number for that three months. And once you have that amount over the limit, and you can pay it off. Write that check. All right, I'm in. Uh, George, sorry, John. Doing your facts. All right, let's go out to Amanda in Kansas City. What's up, Amanda? Hello. How are you? I, I literally couldn't be better. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. Excellent. What's up? Um, so my question today, um, so technically we're in baby step two. Um, I started listening to you guys last fall, and um, I'm kind of backtracking. Um, so we've been kind of doing, like, all the steps at once. 
And um, at this point, um, I have one big expense that needs to be paid off. It's my vehicle. And I'm, I'm having a hard time justifying doing it. Wait, you're, you're, you're trying to do all the steps at once? <laughs> well, yeah, I've kind of, I've kind of like backtracked now and I'm, I'm trying to do baby step two. What happens? What um, do they call it when you hit all of the steps? I feel like going up the stairs and you hit them all at once. What does that mean you've done? You face planted. Um, you ate it. Don't do. Don't do them all yeah. at once. That's the falling down. All right, um, George, save this. So you're saying from why me. pay off the car? Yeah. Well, what's your yeah. car payment? Um. Well, it's like five sixty a month, but I've been paying more on it. Um, okay. Why, why would you not pay it off? off? So the question is, if I was able to hand you five hundred sixty dollars a month for the rest of your life, wouldn't you rather take that than pay it to a lender with interest? Um, but if I could use it for other things while I'm using that money. That logic makes um, no sense. Right now you're in the whole 560. I'm up 560. Who has more options, me or you? So, okay. So here's, here's my thoughts on this. So it's a pretty low interest rate, uh, which I know that's like, uh, that doesn't, it's not supposed to matter. It's when just you're doing nobody baby cares. It's just Try another less one. Try stupid another one. versus more stupid. Okay. Keep telling but us about Amanda's like, plan. Keep going. If I if I pay it off, then I'm going to feel like I'm I'm constantly car shopping. I'm like always looking at cars. This so feels like you have a nice car. Off, what car is this? Um, it's a it's a Telluride. Oh, that's a sick whip. What are those things? Sixty grand. Um, I I got a better deal on it than that. What do you make a year? Uh, uh between my husband and I, we're at two thirty a year. You're crushing it. Why do you need a car payment? Here, I, 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 I heard what she was saying. <laughs> you want to keep a, a five, you're charging yourself $560 because you can't close an internet browser. Okay. You have Fair to, enough. you have to deal with the fact that you think that your joy and happiness are somewhere other than where you are sitting. And the so moment my, my, uh, you're, you're just chasing happiness, you're chasing it. It's elusive. You will never My catch it. My other part of this is I feel like, so we've got funds, like I've got funds and rental, rental account and stuff like that, that I don't really want to touch, but I have a emergency fund, you know, like our, you know, three to six months. I have that. I could deplete that and pay this off. That's exactly what you should do. And there's a 99.9% .9 chance you will not do it. We can't help people who don't want the help, and it sounds like Amanda's plan is better than a proven plan that's helped millions of people become wealthy. You like you like spending five to six hundred bucks a month to have your account numbers look nice over here and your internet browser down over here. You got to grow up and be an adult. You got to grow up and be an adult. Y'all make too much money to be this broke. Pay off your stupid car for crying out loud, and then get on with your life and make you gotta real money. You got to tell your money where to go instead of tell you ride, Amanda. Jeez, oh, this is the Ramsey Show. <laughs> We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by George Campbell. We're taking your calls on money and work and life and relationships. Whatever you got going on, we are here for it. Um, let's see here. Hey, George, uh, uh, you got to add mention. Go ahead. I do. And uh, I just mentioned we had an incredible smart conference event this weekend at our brand new Ramsey Event Center. And it was so awesome that we're going to do it again, but this time we are heading to Chicago for a Smart Conference weekend. So if you're a new listener or you haven't been to one of our live events, Smart Conference is our biggest event. It's every single one of our personalities just crushing it on in their lanes, doing their thing. John got a standing O. I don't think there was a dry eye in the room, John. Well, I, I, I paid them. That makes more sense. Yeah. You pay 2,000 people a dollar each to do a standing O. Hey, some, of us, some of us have it, George. Some of us have it. Well, if you want to join thousands of other people just like you who are following the baby steps, whether you're just getting started or you've been doing it a while or you need some encouragement, Smart Conference is the place to be. We've had tons of people tell us how motivated they are, how this is exactly what they needed to get back on the plan, or how they finally got their spouse on board. So if you want to leave with a plan to improve every area of your life, your money, your mental health, your career, your relationships, Join us all on September 15th and 16th in Chicago. It's going to be Dave Ramsey, Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, Jade Warshaw, and myself for this two-day event of a lifetime. Plus, you're going to have a chance to meet us. We love going out there during the breaks and, and signing stuff and taking photos. Maybe we'll even do another Smart Money Happy Hour live recording which was a big hit. Was and it? the fun doesn't stop there. A lot of surprises. Maybe John Deloney up there ripping a solo on a guitar. Maybe. We don't know. I'm going to bring the bagpipes this time. We're going to rock. That's worth the ticket price alone. And this <laughs> event always sells out, and it starts at just $79, which is insane for a two-day event like this. So go to RamseySolutions.com slash events, get your tickets today. And even if you're not in Chicago, we've had people travel from all over the country yep. to be here. So make plans, September 15th, 16th in Chicago, RamseySolutions.com slash events. All right, let's go out to Haley in Providence, Rhode Island. What's up, Haley? Hi. Can you hear me? With crystal clarity. What's up? Okay. Thank you for taking my call. I'm really grateful for both of your work. Um, okay. My question is, should we remain in a house, but our budget would be like razor thin for the next 12 to 15 years? <laughs> so Yikes. here's my question. You absolutely 100% know the answer to that. So what is the thing going on inside your soul that makes coming to that realization and then doing what you have to do so challenging? Um, so the challenge is that the market is so uncertain and I don't think that we could take a leap to a, we would want to downsize the size and the scale of our home, but it doesn't seem like the numbers are making sense. Um, so what's your take home pay? Okay, so our take home pay is about one ten. Um, my husband has a handyman business on the side. All right, so there's there's sometimes we can make more. Okay, and what's your mortgage? Okay, so the mortgage is twenty five hundred right now. A thousand dollars of it is covered by my mom. I've been her caretaker. Um, we built her an in law, and she's getting she's declining. She needs mm. a facility care. And we don't feel comfortable without her rent covering this, like the size, the utilities, the upkeep of the house. Well, based on what you told me, your mortgage is about 27% of your take-home pay. Yeah. The numbers it, here it don't scream fire to me. So where is the actual problem? Do you guys have other piles of debt hanging around? We uh, we just have my car, which we're working on paying off. But um, I guess where I'm, I'm at is that the amount of, like, replacing the deck, replacing the windows, that number for us is takes away from, like, time with our family to cover. I feel like we're too thin. Well, those are one-time those. repairs that we can do over a period of time. That's not a monthly expense. So if we just set a small sinking fund, let's say, you know, 400 bucks a month, that's about five grand a year goes to, towards home repairs. Would that solve this problem? Um, I just feel like there's other yeah. pieces here because you guys make 10 grand a month. Yeah, there's something. Your mortgage is 2,500. Where is the other 7,500 going? Do you just want to not live in this house anymore? <laughs> well, the house is hard on us. Um, 
Yeah, maybe it's not exactly ten grand a month. If that's on a good. Those are good weeks with handyman stuff. That those are those are when all the stars align. Well, um, hold on, hold on. Listen, that, listen, 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 listen. Sure. You don't need any permission to leave, to to move. Okay, like, but you, how do we know where we're gonna go? Go where rent a house. Go, go rent a house. What's the fears underneath all of this? What's wrong with you going to rent somewhere for a year? Um, so if we were to rent, it would be about the same price point that we're paying now. But you, um, but you have said no the big repairs. issue was that you don't want to do all the repairs and you're paying for all these things and it's stressing you guys out. You're right. describing to us I, a I, pot I, of boiling water and you're in it. <laughs> And we're telling you to jump out, and you're like, "Yeah, but it's hot over there, and it's cold over there." And so we're like, "You're painting this picture that you can't win," and I, I just don't buy it. There's, there's got to be another solution. It's not going to be a comfortable one, but there's got to be a solution. You just, you just circled the wagons on yourself, and you have nowhere to go. Right. Yeah. But, that's where. Yeah. <laughs> think, okay. I think you guys yeah. need to do a written monthly budget, and you need to figure out what your low months are what your normal months are, what your high months are, and start planning for those low months. And everything that's gravy on top, we can set aside. Do you have an emergency fund right now? We do. We have three months. Okay. So that should give you a level of peace, that if something goes down, we have an emergency fund to cover it. And so I I want you to get away from this razor-thin mentality where there could be one thing that just takes us out, because that is stressful. That's going to keep you up at night. And let me tell you this. It's not uncommon when someone you love is hurting and struggling and you are seeing end of life transitions happen right before you. You're a part of them. It's almost surreal. The decisions you're having to make, the conversations you're having, um, the documents you're signing. And when we we do that on a foundation of chaos, when you and your husband aren't aligned or your kids aren't and you aren't connected or you're worried about your finances or this house just has some, some... some memories in it that you're ready to move on from. Your body will just start sounding the alarms and it's going to make everything around you feel like it's the end of the world. You're going to feel pegged into a corner, boxed into a corner that you can't get out of and it's just simply not true. You just got to turn the lights on. And so some of this is going to be solved by you sitting down and grieving the fact that your mom's moving from your home possibly to her, her last place that she's ever going to live. And that stinks, and it's hard, and it's heartbreaking, and it's sad, and it's something to be grieved. And you and your husband may have had a cool house, and y'all had all these dreams of fixing it up and doing it all nice, and it's just become a nightmare. Even though financially it works out, that's that's okay. But just grieve that we had this picture in our head. We thought it was going to be this, and now it's going to be something else. And I'll tell you, the year me and my wife sold our house, I actually had to bring a check to closing because we sold it at a loss. And we moved into a, a, a dorm, a, a two-bedroom apartment with a toddler, just to let the smoke clear, to pay our debts off, and to recalibrate our marriage and our life and all that stuff. It's the best year. We, we it's the best investment we ever made. It changed our life in, in a bunch of different ways. It revealed some chaos that has taken years to un, <laughs> to, to heal from, but it was worth it. And for others, just running from your house, great. Your, your problems and your challenges and your grief is going to go with you. So that may not be the solution here, but it sounds like you're just circling these challenges instead of sitting at a kitchen table with your husband and, and a yellow pad and a pen and just saying, we've got to, we, we can't run from these storms. We can't run from the smoke. We've got to head straight in. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right. Haley, hang on the line. I'm going to send you our Every Dollar budgeting app. It's going to help you make a plan for these dollars. I'm selling the car before I sell the house. And if that doesn't give you enough margin, then we can consider our next move. But I think John's right. This isn't a financial question. This is largely emotional and relational. And we're cheering you on either way. This Thanks is for the, the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. 
And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Welcome back. This is The Ramsey Show, and we have two beautiful people over there on the debt-free stage. Chooks and Virginia, welcome, welcome, welcome to Nashville. Where are you, where are you in from? Dallas, Texas, or Fort Worth. The, the right side. The right side. <laughs> Fort Worth. <laughs> Salt Excellent. of the earth. <laughs> and so, uh, how much have you paid off? $418,000. Golly smokes. <laughs> Man, you're coming in hot. Okay, uh, how long did it take you? It took us about four years and ten months. And I always love, George, I always love when someone says, about, and then they give you exactly how long. <laughs> I was waiting for the days to come in. What was your range of income during that time? Well, we started off at about 300000 and then we kicked it up to about 550000 But a uh, funny story, this is actually our second uh, debt-free scream. So we yeah. actually paid off our debt in, I think, 2017. Uh, we paid off about $418,000 at that time. It was student loans and you know credit cards and a bunch of other stuff. And then we got a house, which is what we paid off here. So this is Whoa. kind of our... Yeah, yeah. So, completely done. You came yeah. full circle. Yeah, you took exactly. on almost half a million dollars in consumer debt, mm -hmm. paying for the past, and now you're building for the future. Yep. And you knocked out another freaking mortgage. Yeah. 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 You guys are incredible. What do you guys do for a living? <laughs> So I own a couple businesses. Um, one of them, I'm actually an executive career coach. So I help mid-level professionals find jobs, you know, within three months or less. Uh, George wants to talk to you after so, the show. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Looking for a job? Yeah, come well, on. Well, clearly now. you're very so, good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then also own a learning company. So we work with a bunch of different online universities where we do course room management and teaching and things like that. And then... And I work uh, for Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, and I'm on their training, learning, development uh, team. So been there now for eight years, and it has been a blessing. It's been wonderful. So um, that's yeah. extraordinary. Okay, so um, let's just stick with the mortgage. What set you on this path? What made you decide? You know what? Let's just pay the sucker off. Yeah. Um, so um, funny actually, enough, actually, take us all the way back. How did you get involved in this crazy? cult that we have over here. <laughs> yeah, it's a good cult. Um, so <laughs> when Chicks and I got married, um, we had like tons of student loans. And so uh, we both knew like, this is crazy. Like, how could you possibly live life with this magnitude of student loans? And so um, he has a PhD. I have an MBA. That's like 19 years of higher education. And the bill reflected every single penny of it. Um, so honestly, we were just kind of like in a shock factor. Actor. And we, um, my parents and my sister are um, avid fans of um, Dave Ramsey from years and years ago, like 20 years ago. And so he was always a book like on the shelf, you know, and he was always a part of the conversations in my family's life. And so when we got married, I said, well, hey, have you checked out Dave Ramsey? Have you checked him out? He seems like, you know, solid, solid, solid dude. And um, he checked him out and he like fell like nosedive oh, into wow. all of his content. I was like, I wow. think you're taking this way. <laughs> like, I, 
Yes. I wanted you to be man, passionate, but I this shaved is like. I my head, shaved my eyebrows, put on the saffron robe, <laughs> drank the Kool-Aid, did the whole deal. So. So, um, so he was like committed. He was in it. And then the next thing I know, we are like in the thick of paying off our student loans, like with gazel intensity as Dan re- Dave refers to and um, so that was quite the journey but that started off us with like the um, student loan part of it well whenever we were um, finished that out we enjoyed all of like maybe eight weeks of this serenity of debt free well I wanted a house and I wanted like we were moving into the next stages of our life and so <laughs> look I, at him nod and he's like yep <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, <laughs> yep and so um, you know Dave talks about paying off the house like over you know a, a period of time it's not the first thing you know but it's like you're gonna be intense you're gonna be dedicated and so I was like okay we're gonna do 15 years you know like we're gonna you know do the extra payments well um, my husband came to me and he was just like no we need to clear this off the books completely (laughs) he was like I don't want to you know I don't want to gradually do this like I want to go back in like intensity and so I was like oh my gosh I wasn't quite there yet but I knew like with his personal conviction that we just couldn't live life um with the mortgage on the books, like for us, like that was a decision. Like I just knew that I knew that I knew he wasn't going to rest. He wasn't going to settle until we got it off the books. And so that started us on this nearly five year journey of paying off our, you know, very beautiful home. So what's the house worth now? About 720,000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, We bought it at 465 and yeah, put our 10% down. And then of course just worked at it. I wanted to pay it off a lot sooner, but that was our biggest money fights. You know, I know that's some of the questions you guys asked, but you know, it was, mainly how much money are we going to put towards the house you know and so she kind of wanted to, you know wanted to relax a little bit i kind of wanted to just move just let's pay this off now but uh, we had to find a happy medium yeah so, well, i was very it. much doing it yeah. in style i was like can we do this in style can we do this in comfort and he was like yeah if you're comfortable with 90 miles per hour like <laughs> that's how we're gonna do it and i was like okay well you blinked and you're here <laughs> yeah i mean most yeah. people have mortgages for 30 years you guys are like nah we're good less than five years this thing's gone and now, I mean, are you are you Baby Steps millionaires now? We are. We are. Woo! Yeah. So we have about four hundred and sixty six thousand dollars in retirement and about eighty thousand dollars in cash savings. Incredible. And so about one point two million net worth. Not that, that we're counting, but yeah, yeah. one, one point two. <laughs> one point two. Yeah. So most people, here's what the objection I hear. Well, Dave Ramsey's great, but he's for broke people. You guys don't seem close to broke, and yet you dove full head on into this stuff. What do you say to those people? Because oh. listen, let's be honest. At your income, you had people in your life asking you, why are you driving that? Oh, 100%. What are you doing? Why don't you, you come out with You need to be leveraging us? debt, and you don't need to get rid of that car payment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... Yeah. You want me to go? <laughs> okay. Go for it. So, so when we first started, I mean, we were making about maybe $100,000 um, together. And, um, you know, and of course, you know, we just worked really, 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 really hard. I mean, I was working 14-hour days, even longer than that, um, sometimes seven days a week, um, you know, just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And, of course, in the midst of that, we had our little one, um, yeah. you know, and it was it was a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, um, a lot of uh, salmon in the can, and <laughs> I don't want salmon anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oatmeal and all that stuff. Um, even though we, we were, you know, steadily climbing, I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, I can, you know, I've got folks who are not making even close to what I'm making and they're driving amazing cars and, you know, and it was hard, you know, I wanted, and I'm still driving a 14 year old car, you know, so, <laughs> but <laughs> hey, I'm going to get something, you know, soon, but nonetheless. Now you're um, going to be driving like no one else because you yeah. drove like no one else. Yeah. 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 So it was definitely very, very tough. But what, what, yeah. what do you tell people the key to getting, getting out of debt is? Well, two things. One is you just can't quit um, as tempting yeah. as it is on a daily basis <laughs> and as much as you want to. <laughs> At least that's for me. <laughs> minute by minute Yeah, it was minute. definitely a moment by moment. So don't quit. And then it, I would say like it is a sacrificial lifestyle. So with our paying off our student loans and then um, our house, like that's been seven and a half years. You know, most of our entire marriage, we've lived this very extreme lifestyle. And so I would say yeah. it's like enduring the pain there is a pain point to this type of lifestyle it is sacrificial and so if it's not painful enough you need to probably work harder at it and that's the surprising people are (laughs) adverse to pain but this is like one of those processes where you run into the pain and chooks bro you better back up buckle up because she's gonna spend some money she's gonna start already spending money money. she's already spending money she's been winding up for eight years she's been winding up you guys are incredible hey we've got the live and give by 
box for you. Um, it's got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaire, which you already are. We've got The Total Money Makeover, which is a book you can give to somebody else that you love and you think they would benefit from it. And a year or two, um, Financial Peace University with every dollar app you can give away to somebody else. Um, go ahead and bring up the little one. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's well, Benaya, is that right? Benaya, yes, yeah. Benaya. Benaya. Oh, look at that handsome guy. How old guy. is Benaya now? He's three and a half. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> handsome so he, as heck. He's not even going to know what... He's never going to understand. <laughs> the no. sleepless nights, the fights, the frustration. He's just going to think, Dad always drove cars like this. <laughs> and Mom always had three different kinds of couches. In Right? <laughs> uh, always. Exactly. Y'all have changed yeah. everything. Congratulations, yeah, guys. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you. All right. We got Chooks in Virginia and little Benny Benaya. Paid off $418,000 in four years and 10 months, making between $300,000 and five hundred and fifty grand. They paid off everything, including their house. Count it down. Let's hear your debt-free scream. Three, two, two. one. We're, We're debt-free! Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. Listen, if you're a new listener, it doesn't take long to realize we have a bunch of inside baseball. We have a bunch of weird things that we chant about and weird things that we do. And understand it can be it can be kind of bonkers, and the message is so countercultural. We tell people we don't care about your credit score. We, care, we tell people we don't care about your interest rates. We, we can sound nuts. But we also tell you the truth that millions and millions of people have had their entire lives changed. Their whole family trees changed because they went through these programs and they've got on board with just deciding I'm unplugging from the matrix and I'm doing life differently. If you want to know more about what we're talking about, you want to take a deeper dive into the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for your financial journey based on exactly where you are today. That's RamseySolutions.com. Click Get Started. All right, let's go out to Amanda down the street here in Nashville. What's up, Amanda? Hey, how are you guys? Incredible. How are you? Doing well, thank you. So what's up? Um, I am going to give you a little bit of framework, and then I'll ask my question. So my husband and I are debt-free except for a mortgage, no car payments or anything like that. And I'm not going to disclose my income because I am local. But um, we are thinking about moving in with a family member, or we are definitely moving in with a family member, and we're going to rent out our house. And we don't know if we should rent it out to a single family and have them cover the mortgage or if we should attempt to rent out to a couple of different college students and have them cover the mortgage that way because we're close to a local college. And that's something that we both actually did when we were in college about a decade ago. So I was just wondering your thoughts on that. So why are you moving in with the family member? Um, we don't know what we want to do. So we're just going to kind of park ourselves and park ourselves for a little bit and um the family member is a lot closer to our jobs and we know that we want to move anyway so we're just going to park and save some money for a little bit and figure out what we're going to do with this house and we figured while it's not being used we would rent it why don't, why don't you sell your house uh because we like the idea of having a rental for now and making a little bit of profit on it it sounds like you are trying to do everything all at the same time and usually that tornado of activity, there's the great Rollo May is a great psychologist that talks about when we get anxious and we get that, we have people in our life that we love and care about and those relationships start getting frayed and our bodies get anxious. There's, it kicks into this obsession towards action. We're just going to do a bunch of stuff all over the place. We're going to, 
We're going to move in with a family member to save money on expenses, and we're going to keep a rent house, and we're going to plan for the future. But also, we, it just gets all over the place, and you end up not going anywhere. You just spin your wheels in the mud and get real deep. Let, back out a second. What, what are y'all trying to escape from? What are you trying to move away from? What are you trying to pause? You're trying to hit pause on your life and recalibrate. What, are y'all, what What's happening here? Well, there's no anxiety or anything like that. It's really just the fact that we're both commuting about 45 minutes to an hour to work every day, and we want to be closer to our jobs. So, but you're, no... you're gonna, so you're going to be landlords an hour away? I mean, I guess in theory, yes, but... <laughs> Why not sell really... this house and then move closer for work? Well, that's the plan. We just don't know what where we're going to end up just yet because he's. Uh, we just don't know where we're going to end up yet. He's what? I honestly don't know what I was going to say just then. Okay, it was all right, all right. Can't escape before he says anything. I thought okay. you were about to say something and you well, thought better of it. We can answer the original question of single family versus college students. I don't mm-hmm. see a large difference. You know, college students, yeah, you're going to vet whoever these people are. And so if you get a bad bad juju, you get red flags, I'm not renting to either. And so as far as, you know, who's going to pay more, could you get more for it either way? I feel like you're going to have to charge the same for rent. And I also I, – I do think this, though. I think it might be cleaner if you choose to keep this rental, which, by the way, I think it's a bad idea. I think it makes little to no sense in your situation, both financially, both stress-wise – in any shape, form, or fashion, it just doesn't make sense. Because then you're going to try and buy another one, and you're going to have two mortgages outstanding. The whole thing just doesn't doesn't sound right. It sounds like y'all are trying to um, do one thing, but keep on another thing. Anyway, I think renting a college student is going to be much cleaner because you may get a family member in there that doesn't want to move or doesn't want to have their rent raised. And it's just going to make things a little more complex. Whereas if you have some college students, they cycle out every year or maybe every other year. Or if you get some law students, that's amazing because they'll stay three years and they're great um, young men and women. So um, I, I might lean towards the college students just to keep the whole relationship business and not have that extra complexity of having family there. Yeah, that was my thoughts too. And like I said, like we definitely are mo- moving just to be closer to our jobs. So, like if it ends up not working out, like we would never have two mortgages. So if uh, like it doesn't work out after us doing it for a year or so, we would sell the house at that point. So we're just trying to figure out what to do in the meantime. Sure, I, I just I get George. We get a lot of calls about the allure of I just want to. I'm going to have rental property and I, I, I will scroll on Instagram a lot. And if I don't have real estate, then I must be failing well, and losing and the world's passing me by. People get starry eyed when they go, well, it's passive income and they're paying my mortgage. Right. And both those things aren't true. There's a lot of assumptions there that worry me and I feel the anxiety and it's not even my house. When especially, what was it, 12 months ago, all the colleges went home. 18 months ago, they all went home. And so during the I, pandemic, you couldn't evict anyone legally. So if they didn't pay, they just went, sweet, I can stay here. <laughs> Squatters' rights. All right, right. So I, I yeah, um, I love the idea. I mean, if, if y'all want to move closer, you have an opportunity to help out a family member and they can help you out, that's great. Um, just do one thing at a time as you're, as you're making your way through. Making my way down south. All right, let's go to Tommy in Evansville. What's up, Tommy? How are you guys? Could not be better, literally. What's up? Yes, sir. I've got a question for you. So I have two, um, basically two parts of debt. I've got student loans and a car payment. I have enough to pay off my car right now. My student loans don't start until September, and I'm wondering if I should pay off my car right now or wait until my student loans come due and then pay it off. What's the amount? What's the balances on those? So I owe three thousand on my car, and then my student loan debts are fifteen thousand. Okay, well I'm paying off the car, but for the reason that it's the smallest balance. And then whatever you have, do you have more money than that sitting around? No, I have a thousand in my emergency fund. I'm on baby step number two. Okay, but you're saying you have another three you could pay off the car today? Yes, sir. Great. Let's do that, and let's start attacking the loans right after that. Okay. But I wouldn't wait okay. for them because that that can could get keep getting kicked down the road. And so I just want to be free and have it on my terms, regardless of what happens down the line. How much, what's your salary, Tommy? How much do you make? About 55 grand a year. I'm fresh out of college. So I want to try to attack my debt early. Awesome. Man, I want that stuff gone by September. By the time there's some sort of, you got to start paying it back, just be done with it. 
Yes, sir. Like literally just live wild. How good would that feel? By September, you have no debt. All 55000 minus Uncle Sam's take stays with you. You start building that emergency awful. fund. How old are you? Start investing. I'm 22. Good grief. Tommy, you'll have one. 22, and you don't owe anybody anything. And because they're so disorganized, you will get a letter, even if you've paid it off, saying your payments begin next week, and you can just smile and be like, no, they don't. And I don't know why. That just feels like a, an Evansville flex, if you ask me. Feels like it would feel good. He's flabbergasted. <laughs> he cannot speak. Are you still there? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm still here. How I does that hit you? put it into action. All right. That's, yeah, it's easy I mean, for us to yeah. say. Doing it, it's emotional because you worked hard for this money and you don't know what's going to – and what if forgiveness – and what if you just paid the money that you took out and then you moved on with your life? How good would that feel? George, real quick, sometimes when someone says I have $15,000 in student loans, that's six different loans of nine hundred. dollars Mine were split up in a bunch of baby loans. Do you recommend someone, and he has a $3,000 car, would you take that $3,000 car and put it in the middle there and pay them up all the way or just knock the car out and then start really kind of back at square one with I go paying from these smallest balance Doesn't to largest. Doesn't matter what the thing Doesn't is. matter because I feel that momentum. Okay. And it's the next one in line and the next one in line and it works every time you do it. I love versus it. Versus trying to get fancy with it. I love it. Well, that's an hour in the books, everybody. Be nice to each other. Turn off the news. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving in storage studio, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, get out of debt, do work they love, and create incredible relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend George Camel, and we are taking your calls on everything, life, money, work, relationships, your mental health, whatever's going on in your life, 888 Five two two five. Before we go to the phones, I want to get to the question of the day. The question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. This isn't, listen, George, this isn't in the copy. The number of times I email or text somebody at work saying, hey, do you know a person here? Do you know a person you here? Got a you guy? know a person here? And then Neighborly's like, I am all of those guys and gals. Yeah, I, I was sick of trolling my neighborhood Facebook group, searching like who knows a guy who has good re- – and they did all the work for us, John. 19 service brands nationwide. You can find reliable help from great locally owned businesses like Mr. Appliance, Mr. Handyman, Mr. and Dryer Vent Wizard. And George's side hustle, Mr. How Could You Possibly Be Wearing Jeans That Small? Visit Neighborly.com today for help with just about – anything for your home. Today's question comes from Lacey in Indiana. She says, I have the opportunity to pay off my student loans if I save for one year. My other option is to buy a house. I know interest rates are high, but there's always the possibility of refinancing. There are also good tax benefits that come with owning property. If I pay off my student loans, though, I won't have enough money for a down payment on a house realistically for at least two years. So my question is, what do you think is the best long-term option in terms of financial success, buying a house or paying off my student loans? There's a part of her question I think solves all of this. She states, if I pay off my student loans, I won't have enough money for a down payment on a house realistically for at least two years. Let's just, let's just take off the first part. You don't have enough money for a down payment on a house. Ta-da! You can rob Peter to pay Paul, but you don't have enough money. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough money. John, why are you trying to hurt people's feelings? You're so out of touch. I'm just trying to tell the T-R-U-T-H. Listen, here's what's awesome. In two years, realistically, as you say, you could buy a house. That's pretty awesome. That's really cool. In two years, you can buy a house. Rent. Rent and pay this off. Yeah. This is... 
a non-question. And there's, <laughs> there's I a whole thing your about question, like, Lacey. well, I can feel the tone of the justification here. Like, well, John, the tax benefits. I'm like, what? Ask a, ask a homeowner about all the amazing benefits they get, and all the money savings of owning a home. <laughs> Number one, you only get some benefits if you itemize, which almost nobody does anymore. And the whole like, you get you, the interest, you can write it off, you itemize. Like, so you're stepping over a dollar to pick up a quarter. I know, it's what like you're doing. Uh, going to the bank and be like, I'm going to give you guys a thousand bucks. Will y'all give me 35? And they'll look at you and go, oh, oh, okay. That's how it works. You give your lender ten thousand dollars in interest to get two thousand from the IRS, and you're like, "Score, got them." And it's a write-off. It's not like you get cash. They just deduct. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna play the slow game, Lacey, because that's how I found the best way to build wealth is. And uh, Proverbs thirteen eleven says, "Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it." And I, t- moving slow is so underrated in today's world because it feels like life's gonna pass me by, John. I won't be able to get that house two years from now. But two years is going to pass, and the question is, do you want to continue to be broke, paying payments while now having a mortgage, or would you rather be free and step into this thing with wisdom and patience and margin? Just solve for freedom. And the 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 mortgage crisis, I mean, not, that's not a crisis, but just uh, mortgages, you and I were talking off air, you, you just explain it. What are they trying to do this, here? So I keep, people keep sending me these videos to rile me up, and the new trend now on TikTok is the 40-year mortgage. And so let me explain what this is. It's a 40-year mortgage. (laughs) So you know about the 15, you love the 30, but let me introduce you to the 40-year mortgage. It reminds me of The Office with uh, Dwight and Michael where he says, a 30-year mortgage at Michael's age essentially means that he's buying a coffin. Now, if I were to buy my coffin, I'd get one with thicker walls. (laughs) Great quote. So here's what's actually happening, John. The 40-year mortgage is not a thing you can even go do, which I'm really glad. Uh, I'm going to beg to differ because I saw it on Instagram. So there you go. George is wrong. So this became a trend and became a big Google search. Really what this is, is it's for folks who are already, already had an FHA mortgage and they're on the brink of foreclosure. And so this is a loan modification that they can now use in order to avoid a short sale or foreclosure. This is an official kick the can. It's for people who are so broke, they're on the verge of bankruptcy. And they said, maybe in 10 years, your situation will improve. Yes. And so my worry is mortgage companies go, ooh, we can make more money off of this. We should offer it to normal people. Or some guy like me walks in and is like, hey, I want to only pay this much for my monthly payment. How far can we go? And they're like, yeah, sure. Let's do another 10 years. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, as we call it in the biz. I saw that tattoo on your arm. Yeah, I would. I'm a big fan. So they actually, uh, it's not a qualified mortgage for them. They have set the rules for this, and it's not a qualified mortgage because this is what led to the Great Recession in 2007 <laughs> to nine. Subprime mortgages. People who couldn't afford houses went, well, if we do the 40-year, we can barely afford it. That's great. And all of a sudden, the banks gave all these people mortgages who shouldn't have got them, and it created the bubble, and it popped. So... All that to say, John, this is a nightmare, and if you didn't believe me, can I just share the numbers with you? Of course. So this article has a hypothetical loan, a $440,000 home with 13% down. So you have a loan for $383,000. On a 15-year fixed rate, about 6% right now, you would have paid about $581,000 total cost. So, that I mean, that sucks. That's still a lot you paid in interest. But when you move to the 30-year mortgage... You will have paid eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars on so, that three hundred so eighty-three loan. The cost on the forty-year mortgage, John. Drum roll, please. You would have paid over a million dollars for that loan that you took out for three hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars. So the, the, the it almost tripled. This will become a product because the bank there's too much money to be made. Did you? I mean, look at these numbers, America. I'd like to. They announce- made almost seven hundred grand on a loan for three eighty three. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're gonna have to wait forty years to collect on it. Well, you're buying a coffin. <laughs> they don't seem too concerned. They're playing the long game, John. Listen, we have to get to a place oh where we are no longer fighting and scratching for wiggle room. Well, and we're scratching for lower payments, John, because we need flexibility because inflation and what if. I, I want more to my life than wiggle room and flexibility. And, okay, I can afford that payment and that payment and that payment when I look at my total take home for the month. I, I, I want to unhook from the matrix completely. I want to solve for freedom here. I want to get off this whole ride. I get off the whole ride. I don't think most people just walking through the day realize this weight that's on their chest 
and they think that this is as deep as I can breathe and they think this is as good as my sleep is ever going to be and they think that just a couple more beers and this is as good as it gets and there's just so much more to life and this just feels like someone who's can't breathe and it's like I'll give you a little sip of air through a straw mm. every day for 10 more years and we're going to high five you and call that life. I don't want that life. Yeah. The key to a life. great life is not lower payments, it's no payments. No payments. That's true margin, no. that's freedom. true freedom. Choose freedom every single time. Stop selling your soul for wiggle room. Choose freedom. This is the Ramsey show. We'll be right back. Buying a home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started. It's 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by George Campbell, taking your calls on money and relationships, mental health, life, whatever you got. We're here. Let's go out to Courtney in Owensboro, Kentucky. What's up, Courtney? How are we doing? Thank you so much for taking my call. Of course. What's happening? Um, My husband and I just started on Baby Step 2. Um, He just recently accepted a position at another job, and they will be giving him a work vehicle. So my question is, should we sell his personal vehicle that he was using for his previous job as a work car and put it down on the debt? What's that car worth? About 3000 Okay, you don't owe anything on it? No, we only owe on my car. How much is left on that? 16000 And that's all of your debt? Except a house. We have 75000 on a house. Cool. What's your household income now with his new job? 54000 Okay. And he can use this company vehicle as, as long as he wants? As much as he wants? Yes. They're giving him gas card and everything. So. Wow. It's a sweet deal. Yeah, I mean, yes. if, you can, if you can sell that thing for three or more private party sale, clean it up nice, take some good photos, and use that towards the debt, that'll speed up this process by at least a few months, right? Yes. Yes, it would. Hey, Courtney, can I plot twist? Okay. What if you sold your car and you drove the $3,000 car? Boom. What if tonight at dinner you slid your keys across the table all dramatic like? You got some real, real dramatic music and you just said, honey, I'm all in too. You're going to drive this company car around. I'm going to drive your embarrassing car and I'll sell the $16,000 car. We'll be debt free uh, this weekend. Okay. My <laughs> husband actually brought that up to me today, but... It's a uh, my toy, so I'm afraid to get rid of it. <laughs> it's emotional for you. What yeah. kind of car is it? It's a Toyota Camry, a 2019. But that's, that's a sweet, a, sweet whip. A great car. It's a great car. But what's the payment on it? Uh, three hundred. Okay, so what if we sold it and you took that three hundred and you just started putting in the bank plus more because you don't have any payments now? How okay. quickly could you save up and pay for that thing with cash later on down the road? Few I'm years. not sure. It shouldn't take too long, though, I wouldn't think. And you've depreciated that $3,000 car out. So if you sell it this weekend for 3000 or in a couple of years, it's, you're probably going to get 3000 for it, right? Right. People are happy to find a $3,000 car. They yes. say it doesn't exist when they call our show. So I know people would buy it in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. I, I love the idea of you putting that on the table. 
And maybe it's no okay. great coincidence that I mentioned it and your husband. And I bet it took <laughs> did it take him a long time to mention it too? Did he do it all roundabout kind of way? I'm sorry. Did he circle the wagons? Was he kind of hem hawing around it, or did he just come out and say, "Hey, what if you sold your car?" He just brought it up today as an idea. He didn't really beat around the bush about it too much. Um, we're just really trying to we're sick and tired of debt and. We're trying to get out of it as fast as we can. So I love it. That that's honestly um, what I would do uh, if I'm in that situation. My wife had a three thousand dollar car, and I had a sixteen thousand dollar car, and that was all of our debt. I would try to sell that as quickly as possible and get out of it. So that's yeah, a good move. Either yeah. way, I mean, mathematically, financially, you're okay. But again, you said to us that you're sick and tired of debt, and it's probably another what six to twelve months before we can get rid of this car loan at even least, after selling the other car yeah that's right and so i love the idea of you guys being debt free today yep all right let's go to andrew in fort myers what's up andrew how's it going guys a pleasure to talk to you you too man we're partying what's up all right so in 2022 i paused my retirement contributions in order to save cash for my wedding which is actually less than three weeks away now um Woo. and i'm trying to determine my next step so should i remain paused in my retirement investings in order to save up for a down payment in two to three years? Or should um, I go back to investing in retirement after we get married? How old are you two? I'm 24 and my soon-to-be wife is 20. Cool. And what will your household income be, you think, once you guys are married? It should be a little over 90. Okay. So there's a few ways to, to skin this cat. Some people go scorched earth and they go, two years, we're going to keep retirement paused and just save up that down payment. Some people split the difference and get you know the employer match. The rest goes to the down payment. And some people just do 15%. Anything left over, they do the down, the down payment. But again, that would take longer, right? And so it really depends mm -hmm. on your the goal that you guys set together for when we need this house. Now, 20 and 24, you got so much time, it blows my mind. But also at 20 and 24, everyone around you is like, why are you throwing money away on rent? You guys need to be in a house. You're doing great. And so number one, you got to turn those voices off and do what's right for you guys. And I love the idea of you guys getting started on investing while saving up. And if you need to make up the difference with extra jobs, side hustles, whatever you need to do, now's the time to do it. I, yeah, and George, there's something about um, – Dave calls it flexing the muscle. There's something about practice. Like even if it's a small amount and we're going to mostly save up for our down payment, I like the idea of just seeing that on your budget month after month, year after year. We give and we put in money into retirement. Yeah. Even 25 bucks a month, we put money into retirement. It's just how we do it. When my wife and I, who works here at Ramsey, when we save for our down payment, we both did 15% into our Roth 401k here at Ramsey. Mm -hmm. We put that on autopilot and we just pretended like that money never existed and we learned to live on less. And then we went, how do we hit this down payment goal? And that will pay dividends in the future for yeah. sure. And, and I, did, I did side hustles. I, I did to it make a separate way. I, I, we went bananas. Right, we stopped everything, but we went scorched earth, and we got a, got it got that down payment pretty quick before we rolled out. So it's six and one half dozen another. But the, what I don't want for Andrew or for any of us is to look up and suddenly you've put pause on retirement for two years, five years, seven years. If it's more than two years, you got to get started investing beyond that. Because what's going to happen? They're going to save up for down payment, and then she's going to wind up pregnant, and then they're going to. So it's always going to be a reason to not be investing, right? And just keep bouncing it and bouncing it and bouncing it around. Yeah. Um, George, when you look at young couples getting married, um, and they're trying to save for a wedding, they're thinking, they've got these dreams of a house, they're thinking about having kids, where do they start? Well, hopefully they start debt-free. That is the best way you can start off any marriage. But having that vision together of what our life looks like, most couples don't take the time to do that. They take more time to plan the honeymoon than they do to plan their finances and their money. Or that, their one, that one party, that one night. Yes. Right. Goodness gracious, the amount of time and money we put into weddings, if we put that into our retirement goals, we would be all be multimillionaires because effort and intentionality went into it. So it takes getting on the same plan, the same vision, the same goals, the same communication with money, but having a goal right in front of you. What is the one-year goal? And then what's the 10-year one that's further out? That kept me and my wife real driven on the money plan. But if you've got debt, you already have your priority right there for you. We gotta, we That's gotta, nice. We're we getting rid of this up. debt as soon as the wedding's over. And you and your wife did a great job of, of setting that goal and then reverse engineering those behaviors all the way to the present. And just, 
I don't know. You're an inspiration to me because I'm, I like to do it all at the same time and just get on. And I just see you over there with a chisel and a hammer, just dinking away at it. And it, and here's the thing I get to the finish line and I'm exhausted and I can't breathe. And you just walk on by and you're like, Hey, made it. I'll see you later. And you just keep walking. And I'm like, <gasps> right? yeah, we, we were extra weird because we started off our marriage in such an amazing place because my wife has already worked here for years by that point. Uh, okay. And so when you start your marriage off that way, we just pre-decided we're going to get a real modest home and pay it off real fast. And so what would our life be like? And I didn't upgrade so, cars. Yeah, it was two cult members getting married, so y'all already knew. Very different. But I drove that, you know, that old Honda Civic that was all beat up, the bumpers hanging off, Dave's making fun of me. <laughs> and I said, I'm not upgrading that car until I pay off the house. Right. And I upgraded after yeah. the house was I did what I said I was going to do, John. But I always need to dangle that carrot. Otherwise, I think we get kind of lazy as humans if that carrot isn't in front of us. Oh, man. In a good way. Because then I, it's not I deserved it. I think that's the wrong mentality. Yeah. When you get married, you start to go, well, we deserve. We work hard. We're well, a married couple. I, have, I, I think usually it's a, it's a picture of marriage. Like when you're married, you all of a sudden just get a house that's fully furnished and all these cool things and like uh, all the cool containers in the in the – pantry and two dogs that are some doodle derivative or oh, yeah. like yours I don't, yours don't even qualify French as dogs, bulldogs but, but um the the mutants that you have but you, we just see we think marriage and we see this picture and it's just supposed to fill itself out and we don't take the time to realize no there's a there's a bunch of steps along the way yeah right. do it slow do it the right way do it with cash this is the ramsey show triple eight eight two five five two two five we'll be right back Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Stephen in Staples, Minnesota. What's up, Stephen? Hi, how are you? Outstanding. How are you? Oh, doing well. Very good. What's up? So, um, my wife and I recently found your program and decided we want to get out of debt. I'm on baby step two. Welcome to the game, my man. (laughs) Ended up in kind of an odd spot. Um, We... Quit making payments on student loans since there wasn't interest in forbearance and started saving that money for a down payment on a home. Uh, and now we're looking to buy a home and sell the home that we currently have and pay off debt. And we're trying to one figure out what order to do it in and how to how we should uh, utilize our assets. So in your mind, does this debt just not exist? We're like, we're just going to move on with our life. We're just going to let it sit over there. No, uh, we actually saved up enough to pay it off lump sum. We just made the payments to ourselves. What's left on the loans? Green interest. Uh, 106000 Whoa. And you have that in cash I've today? Got, yeah. And then I've got a balloon payment on a piece of property for about 30000 coming up. Oof. Do you and have that in done? cash too? Yes. How much cash do you have, bro? About one hundred and forty. So one hundred forty would wipe out your student loans and the balloon payment, and then you're done. You're Correct. completely debt free, but you're back to square one when it comes to a future home. Correct. Other than the equity in your home, how much do you have in your home? Uh, between two hundred and fifty and three hundred. Would that work as a down payment if you sold? Well, that's where I'm getting nervous because we, my wife actually found a house she liked, and we have a purchase agreement. Oh, my gosh. We'll Steven, what are you doing? <laughs> so this would be 
twenty percent, a little over twenty percent down on the home for a down payment, and then we could sell what we have and use the equity to pay off debt. Please don't do that. Or please don't do that, Stephen. Th- think um, think yeah, about it this way. You, we were told to get a bridge loan. And don't, don't, don't. don't who, yes. who are you getting advice from currently? Uh, our banker. Ah, there it is. Yes. What are banks in the business of doing? Giving out loans. Uh, their product is money, and they sell them to people like you. And you're like, oh, okay. You have $140,000 in the bank, and somebody's convinced you to borrow more money. Just think about that well, for that's a second. The other thing, after very little learning about your program, um, I was wondering if it'd be wise to liquidate some assets. What like do you got? Sell an extra couple vehicles. Yes. Or a boat. I would sell all the toys you're not them. using. Do you need them? Well, I like to use them. Needs a strong word. <laughs> How I many cars do you have? I, I think seven total. Oh my gosh, Stephen, what do you do for a living? Please tell me you run a tiny used car dealership. No, I'm a technically a. I just work for cash on the side and will do whatever my wife tells me. I was about to say, do you sell drugs? And I think that's what you just answered. Like, what do you do? No, I'm a stay-at-home parent. Okay, okay, gotcha. What is your household? What's what's your what's your wife do? I'm not sure. She's a OBGYN. Okay, awesome. I, I mean, she I think the, in the middle of the night a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think the title of her job would clarify what she does, but that's cool. So listen, um, let's let's relook at this a, a, a whole other way. Okay, I want you to take a huge deep breath and hold it as 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 deep as you can. I want you to hold it for a count of two. Okay, take a big deep breath. Yeah, got it. One, two. Now exhale it. <sighs> And then I want you to consciously yeah. drop your shoulders, pull your elbows down and drop your shoulders for a second. Okay? Now. Yeah. I want you to imagine you don't owe anybody anything. And you're in your same house. And you're a quarter of a million dollars in equity up on it. You don't owe anybody anything. You're somehow scraping by with four cars instead of seven. If you only use the boat once a year, you, you've considered selling it and you can rent one on the once a year you actually go out on it. Or maybe you, you're you like my father-in-law who's on the boat more than he's on dry land. And so maybe that's just your thing. The goal here, you're, try, you, you, you're so overcomplicated all of the stuff with the math and the somersaults and the bridge loans and the what about this is and we're going to use this equity. We're going to move it over here, but I'm going to take this money and sell it over here. And you're just solving for chaos. And more chaos and more chaos. And the whole purpose of this program is to solve for peace. Is to help people live peaceful, non-chaotic lives. Your wife lives a chaotic life. You, as the person taking care of that home, life is stressful enough, man. And to just throw, just start lighting fires just to watch things burn just doesn't make a lot of sense in this day and age. Does that, does that, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That's, that's the approach. So that's why... George will tell you, Dave will tell you, we'll all tell you. This is way more a psychology than it is mathematics. Because somebody can make a case. I of, guess. Go ahead. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and what I'm trying to understand, so we're moving to this house. She took a new job in a new town. Okay. And trying to keep everything, or trying to calm everything down to get the house and, and not have PMI and how we can do all this. How much is this house you just bought? It's over a million dollars, isn't it? Uh, 470. But if you have 250,000 in equity, you said you're only going to have 20% down. Yep, but we won't be able to get the equity out until after we've sold. So we'll have two mortgages for a couple months. With the balloon payment coming up and the student loans on the horizon. Yep. And maintenance and insurance on 17 toys. I'm stressed out just thinking about it. I know. I literally have hemorrhoids right now just talking to you. <laughs> so, wh- <sighs> I'm, I'm a man of simplicity. Steve. Yeah, I am too. So I'm just like, what gets me to the most simplest life the fastest? And that is to just napalm this thing go, what can I sell that I really won't miss that I can always get later when I've cleared this mess up? 
And that means I'm paying off the student loans. I'm getting rid of the balloon payment with cash. That leaves me with what, six grand? Going to restock my emergency fund. And if I want to do that faster, I'm selling a bunch of toys to do it. Then I'm going to sell the house. And whatever equity we have will dictate the kind of house we get. That's simple to me. I can breathe thinking about that. And you might only be able to put down 18% or 14% and you don't have that PMI thing. And that's just going to be a sucker tax that you pay because you did all these things out of order. But I would love to see this. I would love to see you and your wife sit down and just maybe for the first time ever dream for a second about the life y'all want to create. It's real easy to go to med school and then you're like, well, I'll stay at home. And that ball just gets rolling downhill. And all of a sudden your life is just a series of trying to catch up with whatever decisions being made in real time. And as the old saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, you're sure to, you're sure to end up there. You're just going to find yourself in some place, in some town with a new job and a new house. And you're going to have two mortgages and you're going to have 17 cars and a pony and a frog, like all these things, right? <laughs> I'd love to see you and your wife sit down and say, hey, what kind of world do we want to build for ourselves? Now that we're moving, now that you're taking a new job, what if we paused for a second and just said, okay, what kind of planet do we want to inhabit? And does that planet have seven cars? Does it have two bass boats? And does it have all these jet skis and all all the stuff? See what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Does that sound sound appealing or do we just sound like two – boring old man oh no it absolutely sounds appealing and i think that you're entirely right that getting going too fast and allowing the stress the cloud vision in this situation is what's causing the issues now make no mistake the next few months are going to be stressful regardless if you go cleaning up your cars and taking pictures of them and having people coming to look at them it's going to be anxious paying off your student loans today imagine this for the next few months Whenever they say Biden has a new announcement about student loans, you can just change the channel because you don't care because you don't owe anybody anything. Who cares? I took the loans out. I can pay them back. I'm not going to wait for the government to pay something back that I signed my name to. I'm just going to pay them off. What if you just had peace? Solve for freedom, my man. This is The Ramsey Show. day and about one fourth of you wait to file your taxes until the last couple of weeks so if you planned on doing it tonight or tomorrow because you live for the thrill of cutting it close to deadline it sounds like you john in other parts of your life dude i i like to get my taxes done like january 2nd man that's why i said in other parts always has yeah every other part of my life i'm like flying hot that's right It's time to get you your butts in gear. Let's get this thing done. More people have ended up with a tax bill this year, so it's more important than ever to file on time. If you owe taxes but you don't file on time, you could be penalized, meaning you pay Uncle Sam fees and interest on top of your taxes. I've never met anybody that that said... Man, I think I'm just going to pay more. So don't. Don't put off your taxes anymore. You don't have time for that. And with the right tax software, you can still file quickly and easily. For tax software that's on your side, check out Ramsey Smart Tax. It's a low-cost option that doesn't hit you with any surprise fees or offers to put you in debt. Get your taxes done now so you can stop worrying about it. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax and save up to 70% when you switch from other software. That's RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. John, that reminds me. I, I made this post the other day, and it got picked up on social by a crypto newsletter that has a quarter million subscribers. And a buddy of mine sent it to me. He's like, dude, you're featured in this. And I thought it'd be fun to read this social post together. Let's do it. So I'm going to play the part of the IRS, and you are the American taxpayer. You Excellent. ready? Excellent. Good. Hey, John, you owe us money. It's called Texas. Well, how, how much? Oh, you'll figure it out. Uh, oh, okay. So I just pay you what I think is right? Oh, no, we we know exactly how much, but you have to guess. Oh, well, what if I'm wrong? Uh, 
Ah, fees, maybe jail. We'll see. <laughs> And scene. <laughs> and scene. So that's how it feels for most people. And it can be really confusing. And it's why we recommend get the stuff done early so that you know if you're going to owe or not. You have time to save. If you know if you're going to get a refund. And if you know, I got to work with a tax pro because it's super complicated. And uh, of course, our Ramsey Smart Tax software makes it easy enough that even John Deloney can do it himself, I've which you've been it. known yeah. to do. Yeah, a couple of years I used this stuff. It was, all, it was great. Um, it reminds me of like when your mom or dad calls you in and says, do you have something you need to tell me? It's a trap. Just tell me what you know that I did. Like, um, I feel like that's entrapment. It's, Does oh, that count? It's not really what entrapment is, but it's fun to say it out loud. That's what kids say. It's like gaslighting. We just started using it as a blanket <laughs> term for everything. And everyone's a narcissist. You're gaslighting me. And you're a narcissist. No, I just think you're dumb. All right, let's go to Zach in Harrisburg. What's up, Zach? Uh, not much. Um, I have a question. Um, I was just informed the other day at work that the plant will be closing down. I'm a machinist by trade. Oh, um, man. My base, yeah, I know. Um, my base salary is around 56000 Uh Last year I made 70 something because of all the overtime I worked. Um, uh, long and short of it, I'm about $9,000 in debt between a personal loan and two credit cards. Um I'm on baby step two. I have $1,000 in savings right now. Um, I also need a new roof on my house. The quote that I got was 12 to 15. I can do it myself for around five, which I will. Um, but my question is, do I stop doing the debt uh, snowball and do I stack money and get ready for the rainy day that I know that's coming in a year from now? Or do I continue to pay the $9,000 in debt down and cash for the roof and then save as much as possible and get a part-time job to get me through and have a nest egg for whenever the plant closes down and they start layoffs. What's keeping you at the plant? So like if Dave came in and said, hey, uh, in one year we're closing up Ramsey Solutions, I would immediately start looking for the next place I was going to go. So what, what, what do they have you, how, how do they have you tied in there for the next year? Uh, the severance package. So you have to stay um, for the next 12 months. Tell me about it. Uh, So uh, basically the severance package is um, it's a year and a half. It's one and a half weeks for every year of service I've been there. It will be six years. So I'll look at nine weeks um, pay. And I'm not going to be able to find a job around here making the same amount of money that I am now. So for right now, I'm cool with making, you know, what I make hourly. And then I only work weekends, so I work 36 hours a week. Um, I bring home around $1,500 every two weeks. And all during the week, I have the potential to get a part-time job. But, so but hold, hold on one second. What you're, do you come from money? Are you the first person in your family to make seventy grand a year? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Um, both of my parents, um, my adopted parents, have passed away. Okay. Um, so, so the way the way you're talking about your your predicament and your situation, um, it sounds a lot like me, to be honest with you. And my, I got great parents. We just didn't talk about money very much. Money was really a source of stress, and so I didn't know. And when when you don't know. Um, you either, like George t- talks about a lot on, on the George Campbell show, that you either get into all these crazy traps like buying crypto and all kind of weird stuff, or you just get in this strange survival. I'm just going to take one more step and one more step and one more step. And so yeah. I want you to recognize the scope of what's happened. You're probably going to have to move. You're probably going to no longer have just weekends. And you may have a six day a week job or a five day a week job. Like your life is. Yeah, I'm completely fine with that. Cool. So what I would what I would suggest is begin to imagine, or to not just not not only just imagine, dig in with both hands and feet. And you are not a guy that's that's scared of hard work. That's who that's that's in your DNA. That's who you are. Where do you want to move? Where do you want to live? What kind of life do you want to have? Because the changes have been thrust upon you. And what I'm guessing, if you move to the right town and the right community and the right work situation, you're going to be able to make this this magical nine weeks. They dangle this stuff over, but if you actually just do the math on it, it's often less than a signing bonus you're going to get to go work in another community. And you're going to be able to do it yeah. earlier, get your life set up, and go ahead and move on with your life. 
Okay. Um, I also have a mortgage. Okay. So, I'm so are you just going to wait till the year is up and be like, oh, man, I got a mortgage? Or are you going to sell your house? Because they, they've given you a year notice. Yeah. So here's the deal. There, there is a storm coming, but it's not tomorrow. So if the news said, hey, there's a storm coming 12 months from now, I'm not going to pretend like a storm's coming tomorrow. What I am going to do is start preparing so that when that storm comes, I'm ready. And so looking at these numbers, you got 9K in debt, you said. You need 5K to cash flow the roof and do it yourself. And we need to yeah. fully fund the emergency fund. That would be my A1 yeah, over have, the next 12 months. I have 4200 in the employee stock purchasing program also. Okay. So I'm going to use that and cash it out as soon as I can when you're fully vested. And that's going to help yeah. this process. But looking at the numbers, you need yeah, about 25, 30K yeah. in the next 12 months. So you divide that out. We need 2,500 bucks a month to make this plan work. And whatever side jobs I need to do to get that kind of margin, whatever I need to do to lower my expenses, that's my plan. So we're paying yes, off sir. the 9K. We're going to cash flow the roof. We're going to get the emergency fund. And in 12 months, when they give you that severance plan, you go, all right, I'm going to sell the house. I'm going to move. And I already have a job lined up. Or you call a buddy in whatever community you want to think about moving to or whatever job you want to do. And you start having those conversations in the evening and on the weekends. Um, hey, do you guys need somebody? Here's what it's going to take financially. Here's what it's going to cost. Or maybe you want to get out of being a machinist altogether. You want to do something else. So you got a year to get trained up and, and certified to do something else. Um, and if you find the right job in four months, then sell your house and throw up a deuces and walk out, right? Brush your shoulders off and move. They're closing the factory on you. See what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, the, yep. the severance plan isn't sweet enough that it's worth pausing your life. If they if said we're going to give you $50,000 if you stay, well, then okay, then I'm, I'll stay for a year. But man, yeah, right now, you're going to put a lot of equity into that house, build, put a new roof on it, and then turn around and sell it because you're going to have to leave your community because you're not going to take that much. You're not going to take a, a half of a pay cut, right? Yeah. Do you, do you, are your days in Harrisburg numbered? I mean, do you believe that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, within, it's, the plant is going to close. Okay. But there are so, no machinist jobs in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, other than this plant. Yeah, there are plenty of plants around here. That's what I'm saying. I don't have to sell the house. I can go elsewhere, work in another factory that's within 10 miles. Let's start doing the homework Let's on that. get on that one. Excellent, excellent, my man. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back just after this. Hey, George Camel here. If you love the show and you want a deeper dive on your money journey, we've got a weekly newsletter that gives you helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for the newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work they love, pay off their debts, and create incredible relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my good friend, George Campbell, and we're taking your calls on money, life, mental health, relationships, whatever you got going on, we're here for you. Your work, whatever it is, 888-825-5225, that's 888-825-5225, let's go out to... Gabrielle in Spokane, Washington. What's up, Gabrielle? Hi. What's up? So I work for myself. That's nice of you. I haven't. Thank you very much. Um, but I haven't filed my taxes in several years, and I just Whoa. don't really know where to start. That is not nice of you. Why yeah. haven't you filed? I have struggled a lot with mental health and physical health, um, and last year was kind of the first first start of my life where I could kind of take back control, where I got things sorted out. I started taking big steps in, you know, really taking back control and not just letting life go by. Good. Um, so, but yeah. you've run the business the whole time, and it's made money? So I do pet sitting, and so I started on this app called Rover, 
Um, and I was getting fully booked, but then back in 2020, COVID hit. And I ended up having to move from Hawaii back to um, the Pacific Northwest to be close to family. And then I kind of had to restart all over again. So I'm barely making ends meet right now, but it is progressing. I am gaining more clients. So how much? it's going in a good direction. How much do you owe? So on that, I am not even sure um, because the during COVID and, you know, maybe one or two years after I wasn't even making up to $10,000. And so all of the tax advice I've ever heard in my life was if you don't make up to $10,000 then you don't even have to file. So for me, it was just, I don't know where you heard that advice. (laughs) You could have done a Google search in that time and figured it out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're done burying your head in the sand. You want to deal with this. Completely, yes. So hey, we're can gonna, I just say I'm proud of you? That's that's a bold Good move. Good for you. That's amazing. Okay, and I say I'm proud Thank of you. you. Everyone should be paying their taxes, and every, and there's people listening, rolling their eyes, and blah, blah. You've been struggling for a few years, and you're, yeah. you're saying, I, I'm ready to get this broom and go clean up this mess that's that's in my past, and good for you. Good for you. Thank you. So there, there may be a boogeyman under the bed, and it's going to be penalties and taxes, and mm-hmm. so we have to get a very clear picture of what we owe, including those penalties. Right. And that will at least go, okay, it wasn't a boogeyman. It's $5,000. Great. How much pet sitting do I need to do? What kind of jobs do I need to take to get the IRS off my back? Because I promise you they haven't forgotten. Right. And th- right now the hard part for you is just going, hey, IRS, I'm here. Sorry it's been a while. I'm ready to pay what I owe. What do I owe? Do you have your 1099s yeah. from the last two years? I don't. Okay. No, I, I'm pretty much as unprepared as I as I could possibly be. What do you have? Do you have bank statements that show the money coming in, or an email from Rover saying, "Here's your annual"? I do, yes, and I'm in the process of trying to get. I figured I'd start from the most current back because that's the most clear in my head. But I I have started to work my way backwards throughout the years to get as many, you know, bank statements, receipts, um, any sort of actual documentation that I can. I think the most important documentation is to go back to the the companies that you worked for and ask for 1099s. And I would imagine that a place like Rover will give you a login site that you'll go in and put your stuff in and it will just tell you, we paid you this much in 2019, we paid you this much in 2020, we paid you this much in 2021, whatever. Did you do this on your own as well through, you know, Venmo or just payment services, PayPal? I did. Yeah. Okay. So they will have records as well of all of the transactions that came through. Right. Okay. So I would gather all of that that you can to be as accurate as you can. And even cash. Okay. If there was cash payments that you know happened, if you have statements, write all that down. And the next thing I would do, because this is scary on your own, is get with a tax pro. And we have a network of amazing tax pros at RamseySolutions.com slash tax, and they can walk you through this, and they're going to help you get through this mess to where you're now current on your taxes, and you're going to do quarterly estimated payments from now on. They're going to teach you about that, and you're going to have confidence moving forward instead of kind of burying this under the rug. Yeah, that sounds great. But this is not the end of the world. No, you're not, you're not close. You're not even close to the end of the world. Do you have any money? Right. I... I actually just got my five hundred dollars saved up. Awesome, um, good for on, you. On my baby steps because I do have an older vehicle, but I drive you know one to two hundred miles a day pretty much. I, I'm in a pretty large radius. So and my my car is you know up to in the mid two hundred thousand mile range. So I, I know I have some stuff coming. Um, Gabrielle, what, kind of another... what does your life look like in three years? Is this your forever job? So I actually have, have thought quite a, a bit about this, and I would like to have an additional, whether that's a, an independent contractor or an employee to help me run this business, mm-hmm. but I also started baking and selling dog treats, which are doing pretty well. Okay. So I know I want to stay kind of in this realm. Um, I, I am an LLC, like I'm bonded, licensed, insured, and everything like that. So um, I do want to kind of take this and run with this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to yeah. si- I'm going to send you a copy. I want you to stay on the line here and AJ is going to get it for you. I'm going to send you a copy of our friend Ken Coleman's book, The Proximity Principle. 
You know what you want to do. You know what you like to do. Now you're having questions about scaling this up and how do I get more customers and what does it look like in this area? And he wrote an entire book about how to make those connections with other people in other industries and how to take this thing from an idea, which right now, quite honestly, when you look at your bottom line this year, it's, 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 it's a glorified idea, right? You're making a little bit of money. You're scratching and clawing but you're going to need other people in your corner to take this to the next level. And so Ken's book will help you that. Um, yeah. Call it, call, get online and get, go get a Ramsey trusted. And um, what's the website there, George Ramsey solutions.com slash tax slash tax we'll to, where you to go. And then somebody in your community, call them and just say, be a hundred percent honest. Say, I'm in a mess. I'm in a mess and um, I need some help. And they'll, they'll give you a step. I by promise step you way. they've seen worse. Oh, so good that's gosh. the good news. Yes. They've seen multimillionaires who haven't paid their taxes in decades and they come and say, whoops, whoops. Right. Well, I'll tell you this much, John, as a dog dad, I spend a lot of money on <laughs> doggy daycare and people to come walk the dogs during lunch. Hey, All speaking of, that stuff, of you can make great money of trauma. And uh, being uh, disillusioned and um, having a, 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 a not a great grasp on reality. Today, I'm celebrating a pretty big milestone. One year ago today, my book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, hit the shelves. And the reason this anniversary is so special is because of you. I'm talking about thousands of you who picked up a copy and decided to take your first step towards healing. It's not too late for you, George. That first step towards wellness. It's my way, this book is my way of sitting one-on-one with you and talking about life, the struggles, the good stuff, the not-so-good stuff, and the hope for your future. So for today only, with every purchase of Own Your Past, Change Your Future in the Ramsey Store, I'm throwing in the audiobook and ebook versions and my Bricks in Your Backpack talk. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash store. That's RamseySolutions.com slash store. It's National Financial Literacy Month, and we are taking today to celebrate. Financial literacy is important stuff, and we don't spend enough time talking about it with our kids. In the years that we've been teaching the baby steps, I can't tell you how many times we've heard someone say, I wish this stuff was in high school. I wish I'd learned this stuff earlier. And that's why we created our Foundations and Personal Finance curriculum. It's now been taught in over 45% of the high schools in the United States. It's incredible. But you know who really makes this possible? Teachers. Teachers. If we learned anything over the last three or four years, is the country stops without teachers. Today we have one of our rock star foundation teachers, Laura from White House, Texas. It's near Tyler, Texas, there on on the border, on the show with us today. Let's go to Laura. Hey, Laura, what's happening? Hi, it's a great day to be teaching personal finance, right? You're so incredible. You sound like a like a teacher. <laughs> it's so amazing. I feel calmer already. All right, oh, so goodness. what school, okay. wh- where do you teach, Laura? I teach at White House High School. And how many, teacher, House, how, how right. many students are there? There are about 1,400 wow. now in our high school. Wow. How, uh, how long have you been a teacher? This is my 17th year. That's like 2,000 years in teacher lives. 17 (laughs) years. Incredible. What grades do you teach? I teach all grades um, and business classes, but most of my personal finance classes are juniors and seniors. All right. So do you have some success stories um, from current or previous students about how this curriculum impacted their lives? Of course, yes. I love running into former students around town. Um, For example, I was in a clothing store one day, and I noticed the cashier was one of my former students. And um, before we could even say a greeting, she told me she has 3000 in her savings account, and she's going to Tyler Junior College, and she's paying cash. And, you know, just exploded with excitement to tell me and share with me how she's managing her money well and doing what she heard in the class. Normally, if you're not a part of a weird group like this 
Ramsey Way group. Uh, <laughs> just meeting somebody in a grocery store and they yell at you how much money they have in their checking account is pretty weird, except here, <laughs> right? It's completely normal with right. this group. Um, so, Some, yeah. How does that feel? Oh, it's wonderful. It inspires me to keep teaching and motivates me. You know, the students are looking at me and and they're engaged and they're listening because they know this is relevant and half of my students are working right now. So they're applying this now and eager to get started. And um, when I, you know, they listen and when I run into a student like that, or a student in the movie theater the other day. I was walking to my movie, and um, a student, I heard footsteps coming behind me, and I turned around, and there's a student, a former student, and she said, hey, I pay, I just bought my first car, and I paid cash for it. <laughs> and the next thing I know, there's a, a phone screen with a little red car, you know, that she's showing me, and we just had to hug and jump and you know, celebrate, and I have no idea what movie I saw, but wow. you know that makes me want to. How, how did you get, get involved with, with Foundation's curriculum? How did you get involved with this Ramsey stuff? Well, you know, I've been a fan for a long time. Years and years ago, my husband went to Dallas to a um, conference and came home saying, "We need to do this," and we got on board um, getting our money organized and. When the opportunity to teach personal finance um, came to our high school, I said, you know, can I use the Ramsey curriculum? And they said, absolutely. So I've got a supportive administration um, that we've used the foundations, and I'm so happy to have it. It is great curriculum. I don't know that I've heard the sentence, I have a supportive administration from a teacher in a long time. That's incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Well, you know, I work for a great district, and they see the importance of financial literacy. And the state of Texas did not require a financial literacy course um, be offered in the high school until 2016. Hmm. And um, we were doing it long before that. How long have you been teaching um, foundations? Ten years. Wow. Wow. That's You're incredible. That's You're a hero. So cool. And there, I can't wow. think of anything more fulfilling and more joy than to meet those kids and go, I got to be a part of their financial success, their financial freedom, and see them graduate debt free. Yeah. What are the most common and questions you get about foundations? Well, the students get super excited about investing. They and, see the compound interest. You know, Compound interest. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, we talk about savings and part of savings, emergency funds for large purchases and building wealth. Well, you know, we give that demonstration of compound interest and and they're ready to go. They're like, I got thirty dollars. Where do I put it? You know, and um, I say, calm down. We got let's build that emergency fund first. We're going to go in order here of things we need to do as a high school student. And um you know, they are they are patient for a minute, and then they after class they come up to me and say, so where exactly do I go? Where do you go? What's the, what's the address, the name of the place, and how much do I do, do I give them? And um, so that's, that's the biggest thing is um, how do I become a millionaire and build my wealth? No high school teacher ever told me to calm down so laura so i don't really know what hearing those words is like but um hey do you know the current legislation in texas regarding personal finance required course you said it's 20, 2016 so it's required every high school student has to have it to graduate well it yes it's required that a half credit course is offered no one has to take it but at least it's on the course <laughs> they have schedule to offer it. and they have to offer it at this that's a point, start but it's not required well, I'm sure you're pushing all the kids going, you should sign up for my class because it's freaking awesome. You know, I don't have to push it hard because they're signing up and the classes are full. That's so. amazing to hear. Well, George and I are both in the curriculum and we can say that yeah. it's good, but it's not that good. That means you're a great, great teacher. Well, you guys are awesome and the curriculum is great and you know what you i get emails asking for feedback and your team listens and they apply what teachers are giving in feedback 
And it's a great curriculum to start with, and it's even getting better week by week. Well, I want to tell you, I come from a, a, um, a house full of teachers, a family full of teachers. And so on behalf of teachers everywhere who get up at five o'clock in the morning to answer parent emails and then get to the, get to the school at six 30 or seven. And they don't, don't stop grading papers and answering emails till 7 PM at night. And they do this day in and day out for months after month, after month, after month, after month. Thank you so much for loving these kids inside of that classroom, loving them outside of the classroom. Teaching foundations for a decade means you love their grandkids and you haven't even met them yet. Um, <laughs> that's just who you are. And so on behalf of all of us who aren't in the classroom day in and day out, thank you so, so, so much for your heart and your compassion and for teaching um, these students the financial literacy. For any teachers listening, don't forget to enter the Ramsey Teacher Appreciation Giveaway sponsored by the Army National Guard. One teacher will win a $5,000 vacation, and two more teachers will each win a $3,000 vacation. Teachers, you need vacations. We're going to give them to you. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash teacher to enter. That's RamseySolutions.com slash teacher to enter. George, do you have a teacher that made a uh, huge impact on your life? Absolutely. Dr. Laflamme, senior year of high school. What Changed we- my life. English. Th- he inspired me, creative writing, songwriting, got me into music, mm. got me, to, just went, hey, you've got something here, and I, I love it, I want to help you hone this craft, mm. and it was the, one of the first people who believed in me. Wow. And I'll never forget him. That's, I, my list of teachers that were important to me are, is so long, um, gosh, I can sit here all day, and then I'll get all emotional and weepy and I know, that. I just feel like, I just, it's warm-hearted just listening to Laura. It's amazing. What a hero. It's amazing. Teachers, thank you for what you do. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. It is the Ramsey Show, and I'm looking across the lobby to the debt-free stage, and I see Mark and Ginny from North Carolina. How's it going? Wonderful. Great. So good to see you. So you're on the debt-free stage, so I'm assuming you're here to do your debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? $703,072. Okay. That works for me. (laughs) Wow. All right. I... It's rare that I'm speechless, and you, you got me. Um, how long did it take you? 23 months. Okay. <laughs> the story continues. All right. He's got Kanye money. Okay, what was your range of income during this time? Um, we started at 250 and we, uh, through the process, increased it to 300 Wow. Wow. Okay, so there's a story here. What, what got sold? We did sell some properties. Nice. Um, we had quite a few rentals, um, all with mortgages associated with them. And the increase in um, income was mainly due to Mark's uh, increase in retirement benefits through the military, as well as we were able to raise some rents on some others. Yeah. What do y'all do for a living? Um, I own a party rental business. And I'm a practicing attorney. Awesome. Very cool. So Ooh, that's a great combo right there. Yo, party I'm, rental attorney. I'm still practicing, though. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. what kind of debt was the 703? It was a lot of rentals, about 163000 in mortgage on rentals, about 220000 in business debt, um, the acquisition of his business, and just some various lines of credit. And then we had... Um, I still had some student loans. I've been out of school for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, law school loans can hang on you for a while. So are you are you operating this party business debt-free? I am now. Wow. That's incredible. So how much of the rental, how much of this 
payoff was the rental properties versus you guys using the cash flow? So we sold about $250,000, well, that was the net proceeds that we applied to the debt. And then the rest of it, we were just killing it, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month going toward debt. Wow. <laughs> okay, what happened 23 months ago? I got to hear the story. <clears throat> so we're a blended family of six. We have four adult kids ranging in age from 28 to 21. And I was really upset about the way these kids were handling their money because they just didn't know how to do it like we were with the $700,000 in debt. <laughs> but so um, I was really looking for some content on how to talk to them about money management. And, um, and that's where I learned about The Ramsey Show. So, I mean, that's still, there's learning and then there's going, all right, we're going to clean up 700 grand in 23 months. So the interesting thing was um, I started reading the books, listening to the podcast, um, enrolled in FPU. And I realized how many mistakes we were making. Mm. So I, it really humbled me. How I say this is a question that um, can sound like a backhanded compliment to other folks we've had up there, and so I don't mean it in that way at all. But I, I spent most of my career working with attorneys. They have they're, they have a, a very particular way of, of experiencing the world. The world ha, there's such a gift to the world, and it's rare that I see somebody sit in a room that, on something as I would say as simple as the baby steps and and not overcomplicate it and sell all the way back and go, oh man, I was wrong. That takes, that's a, that's a, tell me about that. So that's the beauty of the baby steps. They're so simple. They're not easy, but yeah. they're very simple. And baby step zero, which you guys gloss over all the time, that was my problem. I did. I couldn't stop spending, especially on our home equity line of credit, uh, mm. gotcha. which is how I funded all of our acquisition of rentals. Gotcha. Wow. So how much was on the HELOC? Um, Probably about a hundred. Part of that part of that rental debt was actually on our HELOC, but I just associated it with the rentals. Mm. So, what is your financial picture like now with the properties and your primary and all of that? So, um, we have about two million in paid for real estate. Woo! Um, wow! Our house is three hundred of that. His warehouse is six hundred of that, and that was our baby six baby step six item. And that's not even touching your retirement. Correct. So we're talking so you got many millions benefits, of dollars. Two million dollars worth of houses. You have your own paid-off house. You, you just have a huge warehouse, property. right? Correct. On. It's pretty awesome. No guys. wonder you guys are so calm. <laughs> Couldn't shake <laughs> these people. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm shaking now when you actually say those numbers. I out mean, loud. does that like, not just boggle moly. your mind? <laughs> and your kids are watching all this. Yeah. If we could, if we could just get them not to be knuckleheads like we were, and keep them on the right track, it, they'll, they'll be set. Well, you've probably heard me say over and over, um, we often want to know, like, what are the right things to say to kids? Kids don't listen to you, they watch you, <laughs> right? And they have a ringside seat to two people saying absolutely no more. So you were spending willy-nilly um, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a place where you can kind of spend willy-nilly intentionally, but you can kind of spend what you want to spend now because y'all are multi-millionaires and you're making a couple hundred grand every year. Um, what's the difference in your marriage? What's the difference in your psychology? Because the, the actions are going to look very similar. The context is going to be completely different now. So we've been married 11 years and we were, we were both independently um, successful in our own right. And so we never really focused on doing things together. So that really changed when we took the FPU. And by the way, we've taken FPU four times. Um, <laughs> we just kept taking it. It doesn't cost any more. Right. You, know, you just keep taking it. And it kept us focused and on track while we were, you know, we go, you know, meet different people that were in different situations and, and all that. It, it we had was four really great neat. coordinators. Um, ben, Greg, Ronnie and Michelle, we shout to out Michelle. to them. Yeah. Wow. So what do you say to, and, and George gets this a lot, to those who are 35 and younger who are super obsessed with having this magical unicorn called passive income and they go buy a whole bunch of rental properties um, <laughs> uh, and they leverage themselves to the hilt, but they have this magic called cash flow and they think that's solving all the world. What would you tell them? Because y'all you, you played that game. Mm-hmm. There's no, some, nothing passive about being a landlord. I managed all our properties, and it about drove me insane. <laughs> <laughs> you, you manage your properties on top of being a lawyer? Woo. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. So what do you tell people the key is to getting out of debt? Because you guys had a mountain, and you made some sacrifices. What is the one thing? The biggest thing is budgeting, whether you make $100 a month or $100,000 a month. Um, I used to, as long as I would put my... ATM card in and I got money or if I would buy something and it 
was fine. I was like, I got money. I'm good. As long now, as there's money in yeah. the account, I don't care what I spend. Now, now knowing where everything's going, it, it's it's pretty neat. And especially being out of debt, it's like, wow, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Oh, yeah. Wow. You guys are amazing. What was your What's your favorite fight? Favorite fight? The favorite fight y'all had over 23 months trying to pay all this off. Oh, uh, it was more, we're both so competitive that when, you know, we put everything in the app and it said, it's going to take you 48 months. And we were like, nah, that ain't happening. <laughs> and we, it, it was just like, you know, hey, like, we got to find some more money. We got to, we got to, we got to find this. And then you started selling properties. You're like, there's some money. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So do you sell the ones that were the biggest pain? Yes. <laughs> Let's get rid of those ones. That's smart. Those were actually the ones that appreciated the greatest. So it was a no brainer. It mm -hmm. paid off. Well, you guys are incredible. I mean, these numbers are just staggering. Yeah, and the best part is you, you did it in a way that is peaceful now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, ju I'm just, it, it's inspirational. So thank you so, so much. Um, we're going to give you the the Live and Give bundle here, which is a copy of Baby Step Millionaire. I guess you can just write a new chapter, and if you'd like to, just <laughs> tell your story, because y'all are there and then some. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody that you care about, as well as a subscription to... Um, Financial Peace University, so you can give that away as well. Multi, multi-millionaires. You guys don't owe anybody anything. You know what you can do tomorrow? Whatever you want, <laughs> man. Whatever you want. You can. A client can come in and you can be like, I don't, I don't know. John, that's the thing I wanted to tell you about is not only did it free up uh, a lot of margin in our budget, it, it gave me the opportunity to free up a lot of margin in my schedule because yes. mm. I was suffering, self-diagnosed, of course, uh, with high-functioning anxiety. There you go. And um, I, I was to the point where I wanted to quit, yes. but I knew I couldn't quit and leave him with all this debt. So yes. um, I don't want to quit anymore. I just don't want to... I want Work to is pay. hard. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. Mark and Jenny paid off seven hundred thousand dollars in twenty-three months, selling some property and making two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Count it down. Let's hear your debt-free scream. One, two, three. We're, We're debt-free. Debt they did it, and you can too. This is the Ramsey Show. Today's scripture of the day is Philippians 2.4. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Charles Dickens writes, no one is useless in this world who lightens the burden of another. I love that. I love it. All right, let's go to Joshua in Huntsville, Alabama. What's up, Joshua? Hey, how's it going, guys? Outstanding, man. What's happening? Okay, so uh, my wife and I are on uh, Baby Step 6, and uh, I'm curious if it's frivolous to get uh, braces. Uh, you know, one orthodontic way. How much are the braces going to cost? Uh, $5,300. Why would you think it's frivolous? Is it just purely cosmetic? Are you having headaches? or? No, no, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, there's uh, a little extra wear on my, you know, teeth or whatever, uh, but you know, I, it's not like it's a, it's a ton, but it's something, I mean, I've been wanting since I was a kid anyway, to get braces and never got them as a kid. Um, and you know, the, the orthodontist said it helped with my wear a lot mm -hmm. and maybe jaw, jaw pain, but it's not so much as to where it's a medical need, you know, it's, it's mostly cosmetic. Well, we can free you today. You're going to get braces, my friend. It is not frivolous at all. Do you have the money to do this? Yeah, 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 we do. Uh, we uh, we have, uh, and of course, we'll be paying in cash, so. Awesome. Hey, Joshua, like, spend some money on yourself, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Have you guys been real focused on this house payment? Um, so uh, it's it's a little bit of uh, I say we're still kind of holding on sticker shock because we moved uh, a few months ago and uh, sold our sold our old house. Um, right now, the reason another another big reason we want to get it out of the way is uh, we're still paying PMI on it mm. uh, because we got a we had a lower down payment because we hadn't sold the uh, our first house yet. So cool. Well, in the baby steps, when you get past baby step three, you move from intense to intentional. And so as long as you guys have a plan to pay it off in under 15 years, you get to live your life. Save for vacations, save for braces, save for home upgrades, upgrade the cars, as long as you're doing it in cash. I've got to know, man. I <laughs> I know this is a, it's kind of a cut and dry call. Like, of course, go get braces, man. Um, yeah. Where did you come to believe that you weren't worth $5,000 or something you've wanted to do for 20 or 30 years? Uh, it's more, I probably feel less pressure if we didn't have, you know, we literally didn't have PMI on the, on the mortgage right now. And even then it's just one of those things of where, well, you know, here in, uh, I'd say probably projecting out about 10 years or less, we'd have the house paid off anyway. So, you know, it, I've been waiting this long for them. Waiting a little longer doesn't seem like a bad idea, but at the same time, you know, this That's would be fair. a step to go get a man. And maybe, maybe um... Maybe that little bit extra confidence you've you've been looking for 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 that long um, will get you that raise, right? Yeah, possibly. Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> that never make financial decisions on that kind of hope. But um, yeah, man, go and get bra- braces. Go get are life changing. Go get braces. Did you have braces? Oh yeah, up through uh, freshman sophomore year of high school in college. Yeah, changed oh, my. I, I promise you, I don't think I smiled. Up until then, yeah, and it changed my face. Yeah, it yeah. changed how I my posture changed. Yeah, I was no, standing up straight. I've, for I've the had first issues time. with my teeth my whole life, and so yeah, I I I just hear this and I think, man, go get them, go get them right now. You're That's worth fantastic. It. All right, uh, let's go to Lauren in Minneapolis. What's up, Lauren? Hi. Hey. Hi. Um. So basically, my question is: I'm currently a college student, and I have a thousand dollar emergency fund, and I'm debt free but my question is i'm going to grad school in the fall should i continue my sinking fund to pay through grad school or should i save a three to six months emergency fund before that what are you going to grad school for school counseling yes (laughs) hey be one of the good ones will you i i will (laughs) okay fantastic so let me hear these two options option number one is you get an emergency fund but then you have no money to pay for your master's Yes. Meaning you have to take out student loans. Yes. I think you know what option we're going to take. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cash flow the masters, and any money left over becomes the emergency fund. And if okay. you have an emergency that's more than $1,000, we're simply going to pause and stack up cash and sell stuff mm-hmm. and get side jobs and do whatever we have to do to cover the emergency, but then we're back on track mm-hmm. cash flowing the masters. How much is the masters going to cost? Uh, for the three years, it's about $32,000. Okay, so about ten grand a year? Yep. And you're going to start working today to start saving up ten grand? Uh, no, I've already started saving. I have about 20000 saved. Oh. I'm putting away $200 a week. For oh, my gosh. So you have $1,000 in the emergency fund, but you have twenty in a savings account. Yes. Who are that's you? That's fantastic. Lauren, good grief. <laughs> so you just have twelve to go, and then once that's sitting yeah. there, we can start saving up for an emergency fund on top of that. Okay, so that's like you would suggest, like, I don't need the three to six months yet. Like, just continue the cash flow and the thinking. Get out of school debt free. If an emergency truly happened, I would dip into that savings to pay for it because you still have time before the next bill hits Mm -hmm. for your master's. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't in my master's program, but in my two doctorate programs, I took a semester off at least in in every one. Life happens. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets sick, somebody gets work gets busy, things happen. And so, um, it's different than undergrad. There, sometimes there's a there's a pace to it, and I know sometimes you go in as, as a cohort and it kind of locks you in there. But but yeah, yeah. H- head in there with your head held high. You you are going to be one of the rock stars. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Good grief, George. I want I want people like Lauren in the school system helping our kids with their challenges. Yeah, well, you're not worrying about your student loans. You can be fully present. Imagine and when you're that. the kind of person, it reminds me of you, like, I'm just going to put $200 in an account every day of my, every month of my life. And then now I've got $20,000 in that good grief. All right, let's take one more. Let's go out to Anna in Flagstaff. What's up, Anna? How are we doing? Hi, I'm good. Um, my question is, 
Is there anything that we should be doing right now instead of just waiting for our credit score to disappear? It's been two years since we paid off our mortgage. It's been a year and a half since our last like open credit card account. Wow. And you're checking the score. What's it at today? So my score is completely gone, indeterminable. My husband's is at 550. So I guess that's where we're a little confused. Have you pulled his credit reports from all three bureaus? We have um, from two of them. Um, All the accounts show paid and closed. Um, Yeah. Interesting. (laughs) I mean, you can try the third one. I don't know what would be holding it up unless he has some kind of open account or he may be reporting payments like utility bills by accident through one of these sites like Credit Karma. And that can keep your score alive. And so I would make sure to log into every site he can remember using to see if anything's being reported. And Anna, I want to ask you a question, but I'm going to actually ask it to George. Um, Why does it matter? Is it just fun to see it at zero? I mean, you guys don't plan on going into more debt, do you? Are you getting a mortgage soon? I can tell you why. We we think within the next three years, we're going to reevaluate the house that we're in if we want to move. If we want to stay in our city, we will have to get a mortgage. We are saving money, um, but we just can't make that jump quite with what we have. Okay. Well, one thing that could happen is they use your income and your non-score to get the loan. Would you qualify on your own? No. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay. So this would largely be on his. Well, I'm going to do some digging to figure out what the holdup is because a year and a half to two years is far too long. Generally, it's six to 12 months and that thing disappears. So my thinking is he may have forgot. that's what happened with mine. Yeah. Because yours was six to 12 months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My guess is there's some little dinky account sitting out somewhere that he forgot to officially close or there's some bill being reported but 550 means that something is amiss because if he something was reported like a utility bill that was paid on time it would give you a good score and 550 just seems too low yeah. so there's some more digging yeah. to do okay. i would get back with the credit bureaus and check in with them and check all the websites he's ever signed up for and do some homework there and hopefully by the time you guys buy the house that thing is long gone and you do manual underwriting with a no score lump George, great show today. You too, man. Good times. I want to thank Kyle and Zach and James and Ben and Christian and Austin. I want to thank you, America, for listening to us. Hey, be kind. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Dr. John Deloney. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific